This is David Spears, civil engineering instructor at Texas Tech University. Talking about static CE2301. This is a supplement to my lecture on slipping and tipping, or as I prefer to call it, slipping or tipping. In the textbook, Dr. Norwell talks about how with friction, which is what sliding is, uh, you're talking about a particle and the friction between it and the surface it rests on. With tipping, you're talking about um, a rotation and uh, clearly the, the dimensions of the object, of the rigid body, come into play. As I say, in, with, uh, with sliding and friction, you're always looking at impending motion and you're doing a sum of forces comparison to see whether or not motion is impending. So let's look at this simple example here. I have a, a block that weighs 100 pounds, it's 4 feet wide, and we're pushing on it with a 30 pound force at a height h above the surface, the sliding surface. The coefficient of friction is 0.4. So, I have a normal force that's equal and opposite to the weight of 100 pounds, and then I have a friction force that arises when you start pushing on it. So, remember this, uh, this little graph that com compared the pushing force as it increases the friction force on the vertical um, axis rises. So, as long as you stay below the maximum friction force, which is the coefficient of friction times the normal force, in this case 0.4 times 140 pounds, as long as your pushing force remains below that, the thing remains in equilibrium, and that's the case here. Our maximum friction force is 40, we're pushing with 30 pounds, so it's not going to tend to slide or slip. But then I need to consider the rotation, the tipping of this object. A couple of examples, it's the same thing, it's four feet wide, it weighs 100 pounds. As long as I'm not pushing on it, there is no friction force. It's just a normal force that's equal to the weight of 100 pounds. But when I start pushing on it, and let's say I push on it with 30 pounds of force at a four, four feet above the floor, the sliding surface, then a tipping moment couple develops between the pushing force and the friction force, which are equal and opposite, so they make a couple. The moment of the couple that's trying to tip the thing is that force couple 30 pounds times the four foot distance, 120 foot pounds. Okay, there's also a resisting moment that tries to keep the thing from tipping over, formed by a couple between the weight of the object and the normal force, which we visualize as shifting over in reaction to, it's like this uh, resisting moment is created by the tipping moment. And until it's pending, uh, to, till tipping is impending, my resisting moment is equal to my tipping moment because that's for a sum of forces, sum of moments about point A to stay in equilibrium M tip plus M resist is zero so negative 120 if I'm looking at clock counterclockwise positive negative 120 which is the tipping moment plus 100 D the, dif the distance between the weight 100 pounds and the normal force, shown as right there, D, is equal to zero. So D is equal to just 120 divided by 100 or 1 1.2 feet. If I keep on pushing harder or if I raise my tipping, uh, the f point of application of my tipping force, say to a height H that I want to solve for, my maximum resisting moment 
is the 100 pounds weight times half of the width of the object, in this case 2 feet. So I have a uh, resisting moment of 200 foot pounds maximum before, moment, before tipping in pins. So for some, most, some uh, moments about point A equal to zero, keep it in equilibrium, MT plus MR is equal to zero. So negative 30 times the H height plus 200 is equal to zero. So H equals 200 divided by 30 or 6.67 feet from tipping to impend. So another example that Dr. Norval shows in the book is a dam 60 feet high holding up 60 feet of back 60 feet of water and it's 10 feet at the top and we want to solve for this base distance. There's a couple of situations. It's, it's a slipping or tipping problem again. We're going to do everything per foot of width of the dam coming out of the page. And tipping is going to impend about this toe down here at this point. It's called the toe of the dam. Okay, I need to do a free body diagram. And I've shown the, uh, the force of the water called FW acting horizontally and here's the stress just the pressure distribution from that water you can note that at the bottom of the dam 60 feet my force pounds per square foot is 62.4 times 60 so that's this value right here 3744 PSF so the resultant of this, FW, is just the area of that triangle. It's 3744, it's 60 feet tall, and it's a triangle, so it's one half. That equals 112.3 kips. Now I have to look at my dam, and I've got this variable at the bottom, B, the width. So I break it up into two segments, the uh, rectangle the weight of it represented by W1 and the triangle part with its weight represented by W2. The weight of W1 is easy, just 10 feet, the width of the top, times 60 feet, the height times 150 pounds per cubic foot is equal to 90 kips. The weight of this triangle is just, it's a triangle so it's one half this base distance, if this is 10 and the whole thing is B, this is B minus 10, this is B minus 10 times the height, 60, times the 150 pounds per cubic foot makes this expression for W2 as a variable of the, the width, 4500B minus 45,000 pounds or 4.5B minus 45 kips. I'm not ready to solve for it yet because I haven't worked out what B is. So let's go up here. For impending tipping, my tipping moment is going to be equal to my resisting moment. Okay, what's trying to cause it to tip is the force of the water, and it's applied one third of the height above the base of the dam. 20, one third of 60 is 20 feet. So I have a tipping moment of 2246 kip feet. What's resisting it is the weight of the dam. So most, uh, tipping is going to occur about this toe. So I have to work out these horizontal distances to get the moment arms. My resisting moment is W1, the weight of the rectangular part, times B minus 5. You can see that over here. If this is B. Half the width of the 10 feet is 5 feet, so it's B minus 5, plus the weight of the triangle part times the distance here is B minus 10. And for a triangle, remember it's one third from the base or two thirds from the tip, so this distance, horizontal distance, is two thirds times B minus 10. So I put that in this equation here. I put in the numbers 90 and then 4.5b minus 45, which I got from this equation over here for W2. Do the math. Uh, 
multiply it out and get this expression and then this one and finally here so this is my resisting moment 3b squared plus 30b minus 150 and that's equal to my tipping moment 2246 kip feet I bring this all over to this side of the equation so I have 0 I have a quadratic equation I can solve 0 is 3b squared plus 30b minus 2396 put that into my TI 36 and I get B is equal to 23.7 feet. So that's how wide the bottom of the, bay, uh, the of the dam needs to be to resist tipping. Tipping is impending at that point, so I probably want to make it a little bit bigger. But anyway, just for this, I can now figure out the weight of the dam. I knew what W1 was, figure out what W2 is by substituting 23.7 into this expression. I get that's equal to 61.65 kips. So, add those two numbers together and I get the weight of the dam. Now I want to check for, uh, the example in the book asks for what's the coefficient of friction necessary to keep it from sliding along here. And remember that's the sum of forces in the x direction in this case. So, my friction force is based on my normal force, which is the sum is WT, which I've called it the total weight, W1 plus W2, 151.6 kips. And to get my maximum friction force, I just multiply that times my coefficient of friction. And I want to resist sliding that maximum friction force be equal to that number, 112.3 kips. I can divide 112.3 by the normal weight, the weight of the dam, which is also the normal force, and I get my I need a coefficient of friction of 0 